Hey everybody, so today I'm pretty excited to to kind of walk you through something I've been working on for a long time now. So um, one of the projects that I've been working on is called Blockchain Bean and it features a collaboration between IBM Blockchain and Brooklyn Roasting Company. And it was a proof of concept that took some of their supply chain documents and put it on the blockchain and that was a Composer app. And now I'm going to show you how I took my Composer app and then um, made it into a Fabric app using Fabric 1.4. And then lastly, I'll show you how to deploy it onto IBM Cloud. So um, let me show you kind of what, what the finished product will look like. Okay, so we're in my web app directory, blockchain bean web app. We're gonna start the app. And then um, as we're starting, we're gonna um, query for two things. First, we'll query for a grower. Um, and then after that, we can query for the actual batch ID, which will give us all the supply chain documents. Um, that we actually updated um, with that um, actual batch. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so you can see that our server is running. Um, so if we go here, um, this should be able to load. Um, so we went to local 3000 slash explorer, and then now we're gonna do this get. So this is gonna query the blockchain for a key. The first thing we're gonna get is this grower123. Um, so we'll get that response back, um, perfect, so we see everything that we need. And then lastly, we're going to query for that actual batch ID. Okay, perfect, so we get all the supply chain um, data that we have um, imported for it, such as uh, fair trade, uh, packing list, etc. Um, so next, you can see this is running locally, so the next step here is um, we're actually going to connect it to the cloud, so we have 24 blocks here. Um, I'm going to add one more transaction. Um, so let's just say um, Horia is cool again. We'll execute that. And then if I reload this, um, you know, the block height will be 25 and we'll say Horia is cool again. Um, there it is. So that's just how to show you to connect to the, uh, the cloud. And that will be the second part of the video. Um, so 15 minutes each. First is the local showing how to query all the data locally. And the second is connecting it to the cloud. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and find our code. Um, so to do that, you can go ahead and go to my GitHub. Um, so github.com slash and then my blockchain bean 2 repo. So this will be the um, repository where you see all of the content um, for this um, for this repo. Um, so this is kind of, uh, so again, blockchain beans 2, that's what I showed you earlier. That's that um, loopback API where you, and this is actually connected to my IBM blockchain uh, cloud service. Um, so the first thing we have to do is actually clone this repo. So let me go ahead and um, get clone this. So I'm in my uh, VS code now, and then I'm going to go and, uh, whoops, YouTube already exists. Um, and then here I'm going to do git clone. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, okay, git clone blockchain bean 2. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time. And then we'll go into the web app directory. So we're in here now. And now we'll just do uh, npm install. Okay, so we've installed everything. Um, now, why don't we go ahead and actually package this smart contract? So we're going to add a new folder to our workspace. So the reason that we're going to do this is that the VS Code extension is actually looking through your file system, and it's going to look for these folders. So, for example, it's only going to see this top level. So it's going to see everything here, but I want to feed it specifically only the smart contract. So it's this lib directory. So let's go ahead and extract that lib directory from this YouTube uh, folder. So add folder to the workspace, and then we'll go into work directory. We'll go into YouTube, uh, here it is, and then blockchain bean2, and then lib directory, and then click add. So we just clicked add. Um, so now we're here at the lib directory. And then, um, so there's like a million ways to do this. So now we need to bring the command palette out. This is it right here, command palette. So if you just click view command palette, it'll bring you to this. Um, so yeah, anyways, this is kind of your one-stop shop. So let's go ahead and package a smart contract. So we're going to go ahead and package this lib folder. Um, so we'll click that. Um, so you see that it's kind of working. And all of, okay, so this video is is kind of expected that you've installed this um, this. Um, IBM blockchain platform uh, extension, and I have a separate video on how to do that, and I'll link that into the description. Um, so go ahead and uh, find that. 
Um, but essentially, you just go into here and then search for blockchain and then, and then install this thing. So it's not it's not too difficult or anything. Um, so yeah, so we got our instantiated contract, and now we see that we have this file blockchain being two at zero zero one dot cds. This is really important because when we actually install this uh, smart contract on IBM Cloud, we need this dot cds file. Um, okay, so we package the smart contract. Um, we're doing really great so far. Now let's go ahead and install it. So now um, I've stopped my local fabric and let's go ahead and start it now. So I'll do start fabric runtime. Okay, awesome. So we're, we're up and running on our local fabric network. Now let's go ahead and click on install. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and pick up that blockchain being to uh, 0.0.1. Um, and then now, if we instantiate, um, we can just do blockchain b2, 0.0.1, .0 and then we can call init. And then what arguments? None. So the extension is going to take some time, and then uh, it'll update and instantiate the smart contract. So essentially what it's doing now is it's installing this, um, um, this smart contra contract onto the peer, and then it'll create a new Docker container, which will show that process running. So it'll show this um, blockchain b2, 0.0.1, .0 .0 .0 um, running in a different container and what's really important here is that we can actually log that container um, to, to council.log so, and, and see logs so people ask me this every time how do I log my smart contracts that's how you do it so let me show you real quick uh, docker ps so docker ps now we see our um, blockchain b2 0.0.1 up 13 seconds ago and we see the container ID 29B. We don't need the full ID, we just need the first three things, three characters. So we can do docker logs dash, uh, I think it's F, um, 29B. So I'm just gonna have this running in the background and we'll see all the logs, great. So now, um, let's go, we're in web app. Uh, we have our query file. Ooh, yeah, we can go to web app and then query. So, okay, so we have our query all here. And then, um, if we actually look at our smart contract, um, we should find this query all function. So if we go to uh, query all, um, we can see that we're actually using a query with the, with query string. So we're using this, So we can do node query. Okay, so we see that there's nothing. That's a good sign because that would be strange if I got hacked. Well, okay, so we've queried and we've seen there's nothing. Now let's actually start our application. Um, so we're going to actually build the dependencies. We're going to use LB. Um, we're going to use loopback to actually compile, and then everything's going to go into that disk directory that you see here. All our compiled code, and then now we can actually go to our um, uh, localhost. Uh, let's go to that localhost 3000. Um, it's running, and we're looking good so far. Okay. So what do we want to do exactly? The first thing we want to do is add a grower to the network. So um, I got some nice handy dandy JSON and we're going to fill this out. So essentially what we're going to say is um, zoom in for, for so everyone can see. So essentially what we're going to say is this is grower 0201. We're given the address or given the organization and now we're gonna hit execute. So we just want to create some, some growers in our network. We see that added grower to the blockchain. Now, if we do a query all, oh, also, you can see our logs are still running. So our logs are running. We see query string, select your nothing, end of data. We see what we got back. Then we see add member invoked, which is where we actually added a grower. And then we can see updated ledger with key grower 0201. And I'm gonna zoom this in, uh, it's not helping, but. So 0201, and then we have the value, which is everything that is written to the ledger. I mean, the key is written to the ledger too, but the value is kind of more important. That's what's actually being stored at that key. Um, and what I've been doing is actually putting the key um, in the in the value as well. So you see that the uh, key is grower 0201, but I actually add it into the value as well. But, I mean, you don't have to do that, but I think it makes it more clear. So um, yeah, we've done that now. So. Now that we've added the grower, let's add the shipper. Okay. So the next thing is um, the trader. So I'm gonna post the trader, uh, try it out, and then I'm gonna put in our actual trader. Uh, no, I don't want to save this page, thank you though. I'm gonna execute that. Next, we're gonna do the shipper. Where's the shipper? 
Okay, here we go. This might be a little too big, honestly. I'm gonna zoom it out. Yeah, that's a little better. So retailer next. Try it out. And then lastly, the regulator. Okay, so now if we query, let's go ahead and see what we're working with. We have, um, actually, let's go ahead and create a new uh, tab. And then here we'll go to CD work, uh, YouTube, blockchain, Bean, web app, and then now we'll do node query. So now if we do no node query, we'll, so we're looking good. So now let's go ahead and add a coffee to the network. Um, let's go ahead and post coffee. It's not right. So it should be add coffee. So post add coffee. And I'm going to post some more. So by the way, all this JSON that I'm putting in is all on my GitHub. So it's there. Um, okay, so one thing that now is really important and is going to be really important for the rest of our tutorial is the batch ID. So if we look into the code, um, when we do add coffee, um, it's actually going to assign a random batch ID. So you see this math.random.toString36.substring3. substring three. That's going to assign a randomly uh, generated, uh, hopefully randomly generated, uh, batch ID. And then now we're going to use that to identify what batch is going to be used to make a bunch of cups of coffee. So, yes, let's go ahead and grab that batch ID. Um, so we see our batch ID in, in, the, uh, in the handy dandy logs, thank God. And then um, now we got to add supply chain data. This is what we've been waiting for. You know, I've been waiting for this all day, actually. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so now we can go ahead and do submit fair trade data. And what we actually need is this uh, batch ID. So we have it there. And then I'm going to grab in this uh, JSON um, from, from, my, from my repo. And then I'll... The most important thing you need to know is uh, update this batch ID with your randomly generated batch ID, so that'll be different than mine. And then next we'll do a, a submit packing list now. Where's the submit packing list? There it is. So we'll do this now, and then I'll grab in my handy dandy batch. Ooh. I need my batch ID. There it is. Okay. Uh, now we'll do submit inbound wait tally. And this is this is all coming from the document. So, so we can do this again, um, but this is all, let's see this 150 condition good. Uh, insect activity none. This is all coming from the. Uh, so if you want to check out the actual supply chart documents that we've used for this, you can go to ibm.com/blockchainbean. It'll redirect you to ibm.com/thoughtleadership/blockchainbean. Um, but um, for example, this last thing that we did is is the export. We can do view the blockchain, um, and then this will make a rest. Oh wait, wrong one. So we can do view the blockchain, um, and then it'll make a rest call to my already. Uh, I'm standing composer app. So this is my composer rest server. Um, so my so this blockchain bean app is actually querying this actually like every time you click view the blockchain. So essentially it's doing a submit uh, is it yeah wait tally and it's doing a get and if you see the get you'll see exactly the same kind of info. You can even see that um, I actually I don't know about the batch ID but yeah oh yeah it is the same batch ID. Um, so yeah everything's on there. That's where this stuff is getting it. It's uh, JSON from. And where we're actually getting the data is from this um, from this um, supply chain document. You can see the signature. You can see the bags expected at 150. You can see condensation. You can see insect activity, um, et cetera. So that's where we're getting all this data. And that's the same for all of the other supply chain documents, um, such as the fair trade stuff. Um, that's that. Let me try that. Again, I'll do it for this batch ID, so that'll make sense. And then the last thing we have to do, which is my favorite part, is the submit cupping. Um, so let's do that. Um, now, so we'll do some cupping. I think it's that one. I hope it's that one. Yeah, it is. Ta -da, ta -da. Okay, so we're essentially done. Um, and now what we have, if we query everything, which we, oh, wow, it's a lot of data. So first, let's go ahead and pour a cup of coffee. That's kind of what we've been waiting for. Um, and so we'll do pour cup. So here in pour cup, we'll go ahead and give this, um, this kind of, uh, and okay, so we got the batch ID, we got everything, and we can execute. And then now we can actually, um, we can actually query for this cup, and we're gonna see some details. So it's nitro, and it's gonna be this Ethiopian natural urea chefe coffee. So let's go ahead and do that now. So in our query file right here, we're gonna say instead of query all, just query. And then uh, we have a separate function query, which actually just queries for the key. So we'll do njb123. And if you remember, 
what we wrote onto the blockchain um, right here. Update a ledger with key NJB, and then this is the value. Um, so we should get that back if we query. So let's go ahead and try that. So we'll go back into our query, and then we'll do node query. So we should get the NJB stuff back. So you can see again, barista is sieb, batch ID is that, bean type is your HFA, and then again, the drink type should be nitro. So anyway, um, so, so anyways, so, um, so now that we poured that cup, um, we can also just query for our actual um, batch ID. There it is, and then node query. So everything that's associated with our, um, so basically with our batch of coffee, so that's going to be the, you know, the supply chain data, whether that's the uh, the shipping or the, how many bags they're expected or there. Okay, um, so that's essentially it for the local part. Um, so now we're going to actually dive into the cloud.